Hello and welcome to Cyber Africa. Cyber Africa on a weekly basis brings to you news and developments on the cyberspace with regards to Africa. In one word, what is trending on the cyberspace as it relates to Africa? Hello, I'm Bayeru Agabib. As we face the new society driven by data and information, Cyber Africa provides you a trusted platform. Here we understand how telecoms, the internet, and the media are redefining our world. By now, Nigeria should have been at least, I mean, consuming its own petrol that has been refined in this country. From music to tourism, politics to business, and education to governance. When you see people running up and down for life, they are serving themselves 100% with, with, with their strength. The Nigerian Communications Act 2003 will let you abide fully by the provisions of this law. That's why Cyber Africa trusts you to trust us as we bring you the initiatives, the issues, the actors, and the role of ICT in Africans' development. For details, log on to www.aitinfotechnetwork.com or email bayeragabi at aitinfotechnetwork.com or better still, reach AIT Head Marketing, Lagos or Abuja. Cyber Africa, connecting Africa with the new age at this time. We begin with a report on a Nigerian-owned startup venture bought by technology giant Apple to improve its mapping technology. Hopstop is a mapping app that specializes in transit directions. It was founded by Nigerian Chinedu Echeru. This news is one of the most trending pieces on major technology news sites across the world. Nigerian bloggers are doing so much with it, with various headlines such as Apple buys Nigerian developed app, Nigerian developed app now on Apple, and lots more. Launched in 2004, Hopstop's initial focus was helping users find their way on the New York City's sometimes perplexing mass transit system. Since then, the company has expanded to offer door-to-door -door transit, walking, biking and taxi directions for more than 300 cities worldwide through its website and free mobile applications. From Tech Biover, we move to a very interesting piece that emanated from Africa's largest city, Ibadan, northwest Nigeria, where a fish seller raised a lamb after she found a string fish in the carton of fish she bought. According to her, the fish was half human and her scream brought hundreds of people who trooped to see the string fish. And in minutes, the story was all over the internet, with social media sites offering different versions of the report. However, the Commissioner of Police in New York State, Mohammed Ndabawa, described the news as mere rumor and says the strange fish was just an octopus. And in what many describe as a mixed bag in the sudden resignation of MTN Group Chief Financial Officer. This is big on the internet now. Nazir Patel, the CFO of MTN Group, resigned amid probe over undisclosed allegations. This development led to a vacancy in the headship of MTN Nigeria. And this is because Brett Goshen, the erstwhile CEO of MTN Nigeria, left to replace Nazir Patel in South Africa. The biggest gainer in this equation is a man now referred to as the biggest Nigerian to assume such a height in MTN since inception. Man Michael Ikboki, who was until now the head of MTN Ghana, left the NCC to join the telecoms group in 2001 as an advisor and later moved to marketing. The groundbreaking efforts of the African visionaries who with undying passion and commitment have succeeded in pioneering technologically innovative applications of new media in African journalism and the media. Infotech Network. 
This is a story of a continent awakening. AIT Infotech Network. Over the past years, has played a critical role in empowering Africans with skills and insights into the use of ICTs in the context of a globalized world. Join Africa's best ICT broadcast journalist of the year, Bayero Agabi from Nigeria, to browse the world of ICTs for its impacts, relevance, and role in uplifting Africa from poverty. For details, please log on to www.aitinfotech.com or Bayero Agabi at aitinfotech.com or better still, AIT Head Marketing, Alabadu, Lagos. AIT Infotech Network, bridging the digital divide. And from there we go to South Africa where the people have come out to identify their own who are making ways in the global scene. AFKinsider.com titles the report Celebrities You Didn't Realize Were From South Africa. And it begins with the author of Lord of the Ring, John Ronald Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, as it's fondly called, is said to be from Free State Province and lived there until he moved to England at age three, after his father's death. Best known for authoring the Lord of the Rings series written between 1937 and 1949, Tolkien also addressed societal issues in other works, expressing his opposition for Stalinism, socialism and his disgust of racism. Talisa Theron is one of the few people on this list who actually grew up in South Africa. Her first language is said to be Afrikaans. Only in the then Transvaal province, she grew up on her parents' farm outside Johannesburg. At 13, she sent to boarding school and began studying at the National School of the Arts in Johannesburg until she moved to Los Angeles at 19 to join the movie business. It goes on and on. To mention about 10 of them, you can check out others on afkinsider.com and about 50 comments followed these reports. That is a show for the week and thanks for being with us. Please log on to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV for more reports from across Africa. And now back to Kakaki Studio. <laughs> Well, I love my love.